way out by Saturn, there's an icy moon called Enceladus. And it's literally spitting out ice into space. And that ice contains the stuff life's made of. Oh, and there's a whole ocean hiding under the ice. And who knows what's living in it? Enceladus is only about 300 miles across. It could literally fit inside the state of Colorado. But even though it's super small, it's got liquid water, energy from hydrothermal vents, and a bunch of chemicals that could actually support life. In other words, it's one of the best spots in the solar system where life could exist. Now, rewind about 20 years. NASA's Cassini spacecraft flew by Saturn and noticed something strange. Enceladus was shooting out little jets of icy particles from cracks near its south pole. Later, scientists realized those jets were coming from a giant underground ocean beneath the moon's surface. When they analyzed the frozen grains from those plumes, they found almost all the elements needed for life. Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and phosphorus. Only sulfur was missing. The only problem was, most of those samples came from Saturn's E-ring, a huge ring made of dust and ice that surrounds the planet. And those particles had been sitting out there for decades, maybe centuries, meaning they could have been changed by space radiation. So no one could say for sure if those life ingredients really came from Enceladus itself. But now that's changed. A new study has just confirmed that fresh ice grains, the ones newly blasted out from Enceladus, contain organic molecules, including stuff like nitrogen and oxygen. Here's how scientists figured it out. In 2008, Cassini flew right through one of those icy geysers and it literally got splattered with tiny particles. They hit the spacecraft's dust detector at insane speed, 11 miles per second. That's fast enough to separate all the molecules. So the team could see what they were really made of. Then the scientists used a technique called mass spectrometry and managed to study those fresh grains in detail. They found molecules that on Earth are part of certain chemical reactions. Those build the complex structures life needs to exist, including ones that may contain nitrogen and oxygen. One of the researchers said that this likely proved that those complex organic molecules hadn't formed in space. They might have actually been coming straight from Enceladus's ocean. Another scientist explained that those molecules could play an important role in biological processes. All this means that Enceladus might really be habitable. But even if there's no life there, that's still a big deal. Because then we have the right to ask, wait, why isn't there life when all the right conditions are in place? The story doesn't end there. The European Space Agency is already planning a future mission to actually land on Enceladus, right at its south pole. They want to scoop up more samples and see what's really going on under all that ice. The launch is planned for some time in the early 2040s, so in just a few decades, we might finally find out whether this tiny frozen moon is home to some bizarre life forms. But Enceladus isn't the only potentially habitable place we know about. Admittedly, the others are beyond the edge of our solar system. Like three possible super-Earth planets orbiting a nearby orange dwarf star. Now, super-Earth is just what scientists call planets that are bigger than Earth but smaller than the icy giants like Uranus and Neptune. Scientists from the University of Exeter found that those exoplanets were orbiting their parent star, HD 48498, which sits about 55 light-years away from Earth. That's practically our cosmic neighborhood. Each of these planets takes a different amount of time to go around its star. One needs seven Earth days, another 38 days, and the last one 151 days. And the coolest thing is that the outermost planet might actually be hanging out in the star's habitable zone. That's the sweet spot where it's not too hot and not too cold for liquid water to exist. It means the planet's surface could be comfortable enough for water to exist without boiling or freezing. This makes it a great candidate for life as we know it. Over 10 years, the team collected nearly 190 super precise measurements using cutting edge equipment that looks at the light coming from stars. 
by checking whether the star's light is slightly shifting toward us. This is called blue shift, or away from us, that's red shift. They can figure out if a planet is tugging on it. The host star itself is an orange dwarf, something like our sun's smaller and calmer cousin. It's similar to the sun in many ways, but as an orange dwarf, it gives off less radiation than our yellow dwarf star does. The coolest part is that this is one of the closest planetary systems we've ever found that hosts a super-Earth in the habitable zone around a sun-like star. Now, super-Earths aren't exactly rare. Scientists have found over 6,000 exoplanets since the first one orbiting a sun-like star was confirmed in 1995. To spot such distant worlds, astronomers use all sorts of tools, like NASA's Kepler telescope, launched in 2009 to find Earth-like planets in the Milky Way. Let's sneak a peek at some of the most exciting exoplanets out there. Gliese 667 cc is only 22 light-years away, even though that's still about 129 trillion miles from us. It's about 3.8 times the mass of Earth and zips around its red dwarf star in just 28 days. So a year there is 13 times shorter than ours. Its red dwarf star is cooler, and the planet probably sits in the habitable zone, though occasional stellar flares could give it a sunburn. Kepler 22b is way farther out at 600 plus light years. It was the first Kepler planet found in a habitable zone. It's about 2.4 times bigger than Earth, and we still don't know if it's rocky, liquid, or gaseous. Its orbit is close to Earth's, taking 290 days to circle its G-class star, smaller and colder than our Sun. Kepler 69c is a whopping 2,700 light-years away. This planet is almost 70% larger than Earth. Its orbit takes 242 days, putting it in a Venus-like spot in its system. But since its star is only 80% as luminous as our sun, the conditions on that planet might be way friendlier than those on Venus. We discovered TOI 733b in 2023. This world is about 245 light years away. It orbits its star super fast, taking just 4.9 Earth days. But the coolest thing is that it might be completely covered by a massive ocean. Could there be life in that ocean? Time will tell. GJ1214b is 40 light years away, pretty close by space terms. The planet is almost three times Earth's diameter and eight times as heavy. It needs 38 hours to orbit its red dwarf star. The surface temperatures there hit 450 degrees Fahrenheit, and with all that heat and pressure, water behaves in crazy ways, like hot ice or superfluid water. By the way, that superfluidity is wild stuff when water moves like magic without friction. But don't try it on Earth. You'll just get dehydrated. Proxima Centauri b is the closest super-Earth, sitting at just four light years away. It has a similar mass to Earth's, but a year there is only 11.2 days. Its star even wobbles a bit thanks to the planet's gravity. That's actually how scientists discovered it. The planet sits in the habitable zone, but gets blasted by extreme UV radiation because it's super close to its star. Right now, we can't even study its atmosphere. And finally, TOI 715b. This one orbits a red dwarf, which is smaller and cooler than our sun. These tiny stars are pretty great for finding habitable worlds because planets can orbit close without frying. TOI 715b may have once had a super-thick atmosphere like Neptune's, but it might now be losing it. Scientists need more research to see if it's now a watery, rocky world. In any case, some of these planets might have oceans, some might be way too hot, and some could even be our distant cosmic cousins. Either way, each discovery helps us understand the universe a little better. And who knows? Maybe someday we'll even set foot on one of those super-Earths. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.